Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me. I am checking in today. It is Monday, September 20th, and it is Maybon. <clears throat> Maybon? Maybon? Am I saying that right? Maybon? Maybon? Or also just known as the holiday of the autumn equinox. It could be harvest or the harvest fest, the home fest, the hearth fest. You are going to start seeing a lot of goddesses and deities in this space for Maybon. It's the feast of a gathering, kind of similar to what we see in the ritual of Thanksgiving for this time of year, ironically, for those pagans and colonial people. Uh, but it's the beginning of the fruit of the earth and the recognition the recognition of the need to share it. Some, some of us darker witches or necromancers might call this the culling season as well, because where there is sharing and security, there is the blessings of the goddess or gods or God during the winter months that this coming culling season or the present culling season, the coming of the darkness, no, that you've been lucky in the fruits of the labor throughout this past summer season. Maybon or the autumn equinox, it is the lesser of Wiccan Sabbaths usually celebrated around September anywhere from the 23rd to as earliest as the 20th this year particularly because it does depend on the astrological timing of the event. Believe it or not, it is aligned to the stars of our ancestors. But all the generations before us would go out and they would look at the moon. They would know that this particular full moon, which is tonight, the 20th, it's at 6.54 p.m. Central Standard Time for me. It's a full moon in Pisces and that it is the second of the three harvest festivals so we think of the past present future the mother the maiden the crone and particular parts of judgment or the awareness of burr, 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 the trumpets uh preceded by uh lunasa lunasa uh it, it looks very different of course l-u-g-h-n-a-s-a-d-h and <clears throat> anyway these are foreign, not particularly Western American holidays, right? So some people will mispronounce it, uh, all sorts of things. <laughs> but then it'll be followed by not Halloween, but Samhain, 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 Samhain. It's not Samhain, um, but it will be the end of the harvest season. And uh, we will get to that when the time comes. Um, but before that is today is the autumn equinox. If you're not Wiccan or pagan or any of any of those particular spiritualities, maybe you're just someone who is aware of the symbolism, the symbiotic connection that you have with the earth and the familiarization of a Sabbath place in all the generations before us that people might have been taking this as a very sacred holy space and particularly of the second harvest. It's about mystery. It's about equality. <sighs> That's something we've been dealing with a lot lately. But it's also about balance, which today we have Mercury and Libra. So it's specifically about these mystery, equality, and balance in our speech, in our linguistics. But the fall equinox is also when you see the blessings, I think people will understand the juxtaposition of it, the, the contrast, the stark day and night. But it is when day and night are equal. So for me, I love M.C. Escher, Demons and Angels is tattooed on my body. The symbolism, Mabon Sabbat, it's, it's this beginning, during, and end. It is, you will see sometimes the grapevine or the hearth shown with vines this time of year on the, the wreaths of a witch's door. The grape, the wine. The vines, the garland, the gourds, the pine cones, the acorns, the wheat, the dried leaves on your altar space. It's all of this space, air, rattling, omens, Indian corn, sun wheels, luck, the waning of light, horns, as the deer are shedding their horns and you go out prancing in the forest and you see the kind of failed creatures of the calling season. <clears throat> These altar decorations are things that you're going to see. There's no right or wrong, of course. You can have pine cones, you can have pine needles, you can have autumn leaves, you can have acorns, small and big, or buckeyes if you're a little bit more of the Irish. You can have statues and figurines of the triple goddess, Hecate, 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 
or you can have her mother, the Virgin Mary, the aspect of the Virgin, the mother, you know, all of this. The goddess, however she appears to you. Now, from the moment the autumn equinox is here, which is now, it is about the sun. The fool on the hill sees the sun going down. The sun. It is not the return to light as we do in the spring. It is the return to darkness. Ooh. The sun's strength is diminishing. This is what will later be the moment of the winter solstice in December for us in the Northern Hemisphere when the sun uh, later, much later after the 21st, right, is, is growing because once again, the light is returned! Christianity! Ah, no. Uh, Maybon, this is the point where it's disappearing. Holy cow, where is it going? Ra is going over the mountain and he's taking all of the things with him. Oop, wake up. <laughs> so I want you to think about what is disappearing in your life. What is waning? Taking a space of knowing that if you have survived, you have made it, right? Maybon disappears, it is said, and taken at birth when only at three nights old. Hmm, what does that mean? What is three times three? What is all along being something that is not anything more magical than it should be? The recycle of life, life and death. The rebirth of it. What I find interesting is the NLP, some of the words that we've been talking about in the Gypsy Tribe, I see showing up in different Maybon blessings, different fall equinox uh, affirmations about being happy even if captive. Cleaning and being kept in your dwelling. Being aware of your cauldron and your other world, your womb of projects. It is about nurturing. It is about knowing your enchanted place and your power, even when it cannot be seen. And also, it's about accepting challenges because there will be a lot you can't see and you've got to trust yourself and know your strengths. So the powerful place is within you and it's renewable. It's a strength that goes and comes, goes and comes, highs and lows, ebbs and flows. And this is that space of rest. <sighs> like a bear going into the cave. This is the sun retreating its light. And so for now, the light is drawn back into the earth. It's gathering strength and wisdom enough to become a new seed, something better, and to bring the warmth of light that we will be looking forward to in spring. Because you can't have a light without a dark to put it in, right? true I guess but that is true and so this fall equinox time it is about well some people are bobbing for apples I can't do that I think of all the slime and spit blah, 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 blah. some people are doing all of their canning they're putting their lotions on they're getting their bars of soap ready they are counting their blessings they are making apple pies the fruits are falling to the ground, and you have to do what you can with them. Falling leaves, falling in love, fluttering of the sound of things moving across the pavement or across the grass. There is a rustle. There is a movement. There is a sense of haste. And so with that, it's kind of also being aware of the air, listening air magic the wind is rising and the air is wild with leaves we have had our summer evenings but now the life of October is around the bend or the undead depending on what it is you're looking forward to celebrating so pumpkin patches gourds those fall colors those pumpkin spices I know right but really all spice cedars pine fire marshmallows this is a checklist of getting your candles out getting your coffee brewed getting your soups on also cleaning your space saging um, getting beautiful smells and incenses crafting for the holiday season I know to hate to think that that's just around the corner but this really is as the the light is waning make a list of your to-dos and your wants 
this is a time to take advantage of all of that light while it is still here and to make best use of the magic while we have it, which is in the full moon tonight. So again, it is in Pisces, so that's a lot of a water things. Think, think of um, scrying. Think of what you see with that duck on the top of the water and the little legs kicking underneath. I want you to think about all of the really cool things that might be on the horizon that aren't be being seen, but that you know are going to be blossoming this spring and how this can be a resting space, okay? I love to open the windows. I love to let the rainstorms um, give me napping and soup days. It is a time for Epsom salt baths and self-care, self-love, intimacy, and relationship building in that space. You guys um, definitely take advantage of tonight's moon, setting your crystals out or putting water out, taking a bath, putting your intentions out. Now, I am going to draw on a piece of paper that I have. Um, and I'm going to be doing that today in a session with someone that is a fellow witch of mine. And in this doodle or on this piece of paper, and this is something you can do as well. You don't have to wait for me to do a reading or ask for a reading or, or any of that. If you're a part of the Gypsy Tribe, I'm going to likely send you one. But if, if you have a set of cards, oracle or tarot, doesn't matter, and you have the ability to get a hold of a piece of paper, again, it can be a newspaper, it can be a blank sheet. Doodle all of the things that speak to you this time of year. The colors, the words, and then I want you to take and draw a little square or a space for you to pluck a card and face it down. Look at it, meditate on it, and know that this is a giving and receiving. This is mother's, Mother Nature's composting time. So it really is an opportunity to give up things you don't need, cut loose the anchors that don't serve you, and replenish yourself. Wait, allow yourself to see what comes and let the tides come and go naturally, if it were. And uh, enjoy the emotions. Don't let it get you down or get crazy or depressed. Sandbag if needed. Set your intentions and your boundaries. I do it with sigils or dots or music or statements. And remember that I am going to be writing things down for you, putting things out to the universe for you, going out and looking up at the moon for you. So even if you forget about it and don't watch this for another week or so, the magic is already there. And you're a time traveler. So though it's extremely important to do it tonight under the full moon because you feel the connection with others, it's most important just to do it. The whim is just a, a synchronicity of harmony, a momentum a crest on a wave that people can point at in a moment because you think it might be a unicorn, but there will be another. So, no stress, no worries, only good things, soup and otherwise, and reach out to me, guys, if there's anything I can do to help you additionally. And don't forget to look up at the stars and take guidance where you can. All right, guys, have a great full moon.